me that. Um, how are you feeling right now about everything now that you've kind of all said and done? It's, it's sad. You know, this survivor experience is like something you want to hold on to and continue throughout your whole life as much as possible. It's depressing to see the way I went home and that I should have been, in my opinion, in the final three if somebody, Ange, didn't open her pie hole to Dom. So I feel like there's more of me that should be out there playing this game. Jeff, if you're watching this, I'm ready to play again. Oh. I need to play this. There's so much more Seb than you saw out there. Oh, well, I, you're definitely going to play again. I feel like you're such a memorable character. Right. Your faces, everyone loves. It seemed like you were always stoned. What's your secret to your like chill attitude about everything? If you go into tribal council and pretend like you're sleeping, Jeff's not going to look at you and ask you questions. <laughs> and therefore, you won't be involved in the drama because whoever talks at tribal goes home. So my, in my standpoint, I'm like, okay, if... I don't look like I'm ready. In a sense, Jeff's not going to look at me, and I'll be safe. So I don't know why they have me looking like a stoner out there. It's not like, you know, I had it. They're not doing it. That's right. just how you were. I'm tired. It's a long day, you know. I'm low on food and energy, so I don't blame myself for looking like that. Well, we loved it. Um, when you look back at your game, what's the number one thing you're most proud of out there? I think the way I want everyone's hearts. Like, you can play Survivor so many different ways, but... When it comes down to it, and you need those final jury votes to win the million dollars, that is, to me, why people vote for the winner. You know, you can have a solid-ass game, but you have to have the heart of the voter. And for me, my heart was in Wendell the whole ride, so he deserved my win, or my vote for the million bucks. But there's no chance in hell I was giving Dom my win, because he was just, you know, a bossy-ass New Yorker, so... <laughs> Hey, don't say anything bad about New Yorkers, okay? I know. Don't, you don't have to blame you the like state. A, you look like someone from Florida, you know, okay. or Hawaii. So, but yeah, Dom, he just, I, I never had it in, in me to vote for him. So as long as you can kind of, I was so proud of the way I played the game that way, in a sense that it got me so far that I didn't even have to try to play the game until the final six. Well, we loved watching you and congrats on a really fun season. We'll see you out there again, I'm sure. I'm going to be back. I promise you that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right, we're here with Dom in second place. <laughs> How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I'm relieved that we can finally openly discuss it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not disappointed. That's not the right word because I, I think I, I did a really good job out there. Um, heartbroken, you know? And I get it because I was, you know, reading the comments all throughout the season about people weren't sure who's going to get this game, Wendell or Dom, Wendell or Dom. And it's amazing that it played out like that all the way to the end where even the jury agreed, Wendell or Dom, they weren't sure. So it's great to be a part of history, obviously. No one's ever done that before. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, if I could have just one more. Yeah. Okay, looking back, because I thought you kind of killed that final tribal council. I thought you had it in the bag, and then you didn't. If you could go back and change one thing... Like, what, was there a move that sticks out or something you would have just changed if you could go back? Any move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my, the one that keeps me up at night is when I won Final Four Immunity Challenge, I absolutely should have sat down at the fire-making station. First, I should have put my immunity necklace around Laurel, mm -hmm. sat down at fire and said, Laurel, you choose who I go up against in fire. I'm ready to go. And I was assumed that she would have put me up against Wendell. And taking them down at that moment yeah. for sure but okay i know you and wendell are good friends sure. so are you happy for wendell i am and i've had a long time to process it and if i couldn't have the money it better be him because everyone played great out there there's no question about it but uh wendell brought a real sense of creativity to the game he his social game was on point and as a fan of the game i want someone who played a great game to have the money so if it couldn't be me it better be him yeah Okay, so looking back, what's your favorite moment out there? It doesn't have to be strategy-based, but I know you're a big fan of the show. Yeah. So is there a moment that is really special to you? Um, like, f from a fan standpoint and, like, accomplishing some big moves, I was really happy about it. But my, my ultimate moment in the game was when Wendell and I were on a reward challenge together, the Spindle Challenge. And we won because, first of all, that was the most amazing challenge to do. But then we won, and then we got to go to the village with all the kids and hang out with the, the you know, the, the people in the village. 
And that was when the three of us, Laurel, myself, and Wendell, were able to just really let back and have that moment and embrace the, the beauty of the game and just take it all in without worrying that we're talking about each other. And that, for me, was like the day I really enjoyed. Obviously, family loved one visit as well. Um, seeing my wife come out was great. But it was not, uh, it was kind of cut short. Yeah. And it was like, it, it hurt that it was cut so short. So if that was longer, easily that would have been my greatest day. But the fact that um, the village reward, we were out there all day. We got to hang out with the kids all day and they didn't rush us. And so for me, that was it. Yeah, okay, then I have to say this too. Uh, you found my idol out there, yes, which is so exciting. Yes. But you played it and it didn't really matter. It was kind yeah. of a wash. Yeah. But do you think that you reversed the curse? Well, I'd say so because it it saved me at Final Five, right? Um, it did what I needed it to do, you know? And I think the beauty of it is that I found it on the second night out there, mm -hmm. and I didn't even have to play it for 37 days or 36 days, yeah. whatever it was. So for me, that was a huge accomplishment in itself that I didn't have to play an idol the whole time I was out there. I was able to play this game socially and still get to where I wanted to get and that the idol was only a backup plan yeah. in the event that my plan was going downhill. Did you feel like I was there with you? Yeah. Absolutely, it's total connection. I couldn't stop thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling, first of all? Um, exhausted. It is a long process. It took almost a year to get to this point. So, yeah, I'm, I'm exhausted, but amazingly, this event has, has just been crazy. One of the moments that sticks out for me watching you was when you crushed that gross food eating challenge. Did you know you had that in you to just take down gross items of food so quickly? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, when we read that tree mail and everybody assumed that it was this, I had it. Like, I locked in and there was no doubt that I was not going to bring that accessory home. What did your family say about that? Oh, my God. My, my daughter's like, Mom, really? If you're going to win one, you had to win that one like that. Um, you, you're a veteran. So first of all, like, thank you so much for serving. Other people that have, have been veterans and have played Survivor have talked about like, Survivor being like tough and like the real deal. How does it compare, if it compares at all? Or did any of your experience help you in this game? Um, I think the difficulty is, you know, they compare, I mean, so, so similar. Um, so they're both extremely hard. Um, for me, Survivor was harder than my 15-month appointment and my 13-month appointment. Really? Yes, and this is why, because I went for the first six months without even talking to my kids when I went to Iraq. Um, and, of course, like, so when you deploy and you have somebody in the foxhole next to you, you know without a doubt they have your back. You go to Survivor and that guy in the foxhole next to you, he's stabbing you in the back. So that was extremely hard for me. Like, I am stuck and to my bound on uh, loyalty and trust and there's none of that out there that's really interesting i didn't think about that like on survivor there really is no one you can trust at all looking back how do you think you grew as a person if you did um well for me it, it was extremely hard to take time and moments for myself and survivor has been a dream from of mine since you know season one so actually taking the moment for myself was very, very emotional. And there was a couple times out there that, that I had not one thought on my mind and I truly appreciate who I was, so. Amazing, that's so amazing to hear as well. All right, congratulations, and it was really fun watching you. Thank you. Nice You're to amazing. see you. All right, so quick picture. Jonathan, you got fifth place. You know, that's a good number to finish. I was fifth place my first season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this season I'm the last person voted out as well. So I take that honor with pride for sure. <laughs> you got sassy at the end. Like I was like, oh my gosh, Donathan has arrived and you were throwing some shade and sass. Mm -hmm. Do you kind of wish you would have maybe started that earlier or what kind of went behind that? Well, what was happening was I was trying to make moves and trying to start earlier. But at the Des vote, you know, I was trying to get Laurel to kind of go with her. And it was just a combination of trying each week and not being able to do anything. So. I'm not going to be remembered to somebody that wrote coattails. I want to go out there and prove to people that I was out there to play. So, honey, I use my voice and I use it loud and clear. <laughs> You're so lovable. Everyone loves you. I was out in the audience and everyone was cheering for you. When you look back at the season, like, how do you think you changed or grew the most? Is there a moment? Yeah, I mean, kind of when I realized that I had to play the game for myself, I realized at the end that I was going to be this big voice for this season so my voice is something that I didn't have when I was growing up so 
to be on Survivor and do it, like that's my biggest my biggest thing out here for sure. If you could change one thing in your game, what would it be? If I was to change one thing in my game, it probably would have been to flip the vote on Wendell and tie it up and try to, f to flip it afterwards at the final eight for yeah. sure. Um, when we were out in Fiji, when we interviewed you guys, uh, you taught me a fun dance move. Do you remember it? I do. It was, you, you actually remember it? <laughs> of course, it was in my hip hop dance routine that oh, was in my, in my high school. Wait, let's do, what was it again? It was it's it's was like the. Like then you go down. Oh, yeah. So now that you voted for Wendell and he's a millionaire, what does he owe you? Probably half of that money, right? I feel like... Well, half the money goes to taxes, but then maybe half of that. Half of what's left after that. <laughs> Have you guys talked about that? Like, has he thanked you? Like, what was that like? Oh, yeah. He's thanked me. I mean, we had a pretty emotional moment right out there. So he earned it. He deserves it. He doesn't owe me anything for it. Yeah. You played a very loyal game. Um, you know, obviously some people are like, ah, oh, like you should have made a move against them. When you look back at your game... Do you wish you would have made a move, or are you happy with what, with everything that happened? Since I lost, I wish I would have done something differently. In the moment, I thought I was making the right decisions for me. I thought that I needed those guys to get me further because I had been burned by the people on the other side. Um, but yeah, looking back, I wish I did something different, and it seems like the jury was seeking that big move and looking for a flash, and they had a lot more of that than I did. Yeah, no, I mean, I know from playing, it's so hard when you're out there yeah. because you think, I mean, I was going to go home, I was going to go to the end with... Boston Rob, <laughs> like you, you don't you don't realize like who the jury is gonna vote for and everything. Yeah. Uh, when you look back at your game as well, what's the moment that sticks out to you as like something that affected you as a person and then actually like made you grow? Oh my gosh, I think one of my biggest takeaways is my friendship with Donathan. I mean, you've seen it. Donathan is just such a pure soul, and getting to know him out there. I mean, as much as I love Dom and Wendell, these two guys. I mean, Donathan was my guy out there, and I think we really had each other's backs out there on a personal level. I don't think I would have gotten through the game without him. I mean, I could count on him for when we needed a hug, when we needed a kiss, when we needed to get through a tough time. Like, he was my guy out there. So I'm just so happy to have gotten to know him and so happy for him to have had this experience. So I'll take away that friendship with him. And if you would play again, would you play again, first of all? Yeah, of course. And how would you change your game up? Flash your bigger moves, right? That's what everyone wants. So. Oh, they always want the big moves. It's true, though. Uh, well, it was really fun to watch you. Congrats Thank on you. making the final three and everything. Thank nice you. to see you. I'm here with the winner of Survivor Ghost Island. It's Wendell. How are you feeling? Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, feeling awesome. That's crazy. Did you think at all that you had it in the bag when you were at Final Tribal Council? Uh, not so much. No. That was difficult. Dom is an, a tremendous, tremendous Survivor player. He's a big talker. And I knew I was going up against an amazing, you know, an amazing strategist in the game, but also someone that will convince a lot of people on the jury but I also felt pretty confident in myself yeah so when it comes down to the money or the title what means more to you come on <laughs> come on as much as I love Survivor and I've been a big old fan for a long time give me my million dollars please Wait, really I, would, I thought you're gonna say the title honestly Andrea come on <laughs> I am 34 years old now I, I would love a million dollars I I do have somewhat of an ego and like yes i'm glad that i'm soul survivor but like it's good to have the million you know what? i you're a realist because a lot of people that win they always say it's the title but i like that you keep it real wendell all right let's let's run it back i'm glad that i have the title i would take the title yeah. over a million. you said the money um so you said the money what are you gonna do with the money what's the first thing you're gonna buy um i might i might start paying off my law or continue paying off my law school loans I have a lot, a lot of loans, and then with the $2 remaining, maybe I could get like a dollar menu at McDonald's or something, I don't know. Is there like a fun thing though that you want to spend some money on? It would be cool to like go on a trip with my buddies or something like that, yeah. Um, when you look back at your game, what's your favorite memory or like a funny memory that sticks out? I, from my game, I like the bromance that I established with Dom. He was a great player to play with. And um, we were both, you know, older guys on the island. And oh, okay, you're 34. You're young. We had a very young cast. And um, I looked at Dom and his relationship with his wife. 
and maybe I want to have something like that one day. And it was good to just bounce a lot off of him and talk trash to him and compete against him and beat him sometimes and he beat me sometimes. It was just a great um it was a great bromance that we had. And we're great friends outside of the show now. Yeah, it was a super adorable bromance. Everyone talks about the game, but what was it like being here with your friends and family on the stage with Jeff? Like tell, talk me through those emotions. This was it was pretty intense, but it was it was like I was overwhelmed with joy. I was so happy. I looked out, I saw a bunch of my friends out there. I saw my cast Everyone, the whole cast, we're all great friends now, you know, we're, we love each other and looking out and, and knowing, knowing that they were about to announce me as the winner, I was just overcome with emotions and joy and then my family ran up on stage and it was just the best feeling you could ever have. And you're a furniture designer, correct? So on the island, I know you built some furniture. I, wanna, I want the rundown. What did you build out there? Okay. I think when I, when I left the island, I itemized. I think I had like 30 things that I built That's out there. A lot. Even from like, like four or five different fire pits, three beds, a few swing sets, an awesome clothes drying rack that was like a piece of art. Um, we called it the sectional sofa up front, which was just some, um, some wood that we were able to, I don't know. I built a lot of, st I built like, what else? A few games. Yeah. Um, I think we were out there on the 4th of July, so I built a ring toss game out there. Dom explained to me this other ring game that where like you, you push a ring that's attached to a string and it has to hook onto a nail. They got to a nail, yeah. Yes. Nail those in bars. I'm really good at it. Yeah. I built one of those. He described it to me and I built an awesome one of those. Um, what else? The torch holder for our torches. Um, Libby is like a, uh, she likes cooking things and so I decided to kind of make her a little pantry. Um, there was, at the merge, Michael came over with all the tools from... Malolo, so finally I was able to work with tools and we made a tool shed, that's what we called it, a place to just store all our tools. What else? Oh, I built, I built Laurel a fire making station because I didn't know if, if she was going to be up against anyone at the final fire. So like way off in the woods, I built her a table, I left a machete and some uh, flint up there. I just built, I built a bunch of fake idols that I never really used. So you were you were working. Now that's what I'm talking about. That is fun. Building games. Building. I mean, I couldn't do it because I'm not a furniture builder. But you you did a good I job. I know. Yeah, I, I did it. I did it. It was awesome. It kept me um it kept me at peace out there. I was able to build it and like strategize, but also take my mind off yeah. of the game sometimes. Okay, last thing. Will you play a little game with me? Sure. Okay. So obviously it came down to a tie, which has never happened in the history of Survivor. And Laurel had to do the last vote. She voted for you, which you owe her, by the way. I've, I've, owned, I've owed Laurel since she saved me and they voted out Morgan. She saved me numerous times. Yeah. I, I owe my game to Laurel. Some people were, didn't know that that's how a tiebreaker went down on Survivor because it's never happened before. So let's say that we had to do a different tiebreaker. Let's say the tiebreaker was a fire-making challenge between you and Dom. Who would win? I'd win. Why? Because I'm a better fire-maker than Dom. No, Dom, Dom can make fire very, very fast, but I've been practicing forever, and I think that would be a good challenge. I love that because both of you said that you would win. Yourself, you said you, yourself would win. Of course, of course. He knows, just like if we arm wrestled. No, I'm saying he thinks he would win, you think you'd win. Yes, and if you asked him who would win an arm wrestle, he would probably think he can win, and I would probably think I can win. If you asked Dom if he could beat me at basketball, he would probably think he can win, and I would probably think I could win. All right, let's say the tiebreaker was a dance-off. Who wins? I would win. You know that. You know that. I don't know if I know that. Can we see your, your go-to move? I mean, you know, I got, I got a little... You got to keep it real cool or whatever, but you know, I do my thing out here. I do my thing out here. Yes! <laughs> you definitely win that one. Uh, personality off. Who wins? Tom has quite the personality, but I would win that. I would win that. You're going to win everyone? Probably. What, what could he beat me at? If we had a beard competition, who would win that? Okay, you would win that. Okay, last thing. Let's say the tiebreaker was, and this is a shout out to Chris Noble, a wrap off. Ready? Like we're walking down the carpet, yo, try not to stare, but I'm with Wendell, the new millionaire. Yeah, yeah, I'm fooling with my hair. I'm looking at Dom over there. I don't really got too many bars, but tonight I'm going to hit the bar. After I drink, won't get behind the car. That's all I got. I don't got bars. I don't, got, I don't know. That was perfect. Yeah. You win. 
Thank you. You win. Did, did Dom give you any bars? No. Uh, he was like, Wendell wins. <laughs>